Welcome everyone to Superintendent's Corner. I'm Dr. David Clinton, Superintendent. Today I have uh, two students, two outstanding students that are leading our school in many different ways. And we're going to talk about Mayor's Youth Council. It's a program that started uh, a year ago and this year they have an exciting project we're going to talk about. Uh, we have Jonathan Ott, he's President of Mayor's Youth Council and Emma Bevins, Vice President. Um, and they have some, some things that are going on, connecting with the city and the schools that uh, really bring home the guiding principle of both individual student growth and collaboration, things that really make uh, learning come alive. So welcome to the, the show, everybody. Thank you. So let's just talk a little bit about uh, Mayor's Youth Council. What is Mayor's Youth Council? Jonathan, you're present. You get to speak first. <laughs> All right. Mayor's Youth Council is something that we came up with last year during the summer. It was a function designed to connect the schools with the Office of the Mayor and the community. All right, and I know when you guys first started, uh, Mayor McGinnis kind of was it was at the helm at that point in time. What was what was the initial thought? Was it always going to be about projects, or what were you guys going to do? Um, and like Jonathan said, the main goal is just to connect the schools with the city. So whether that was through like I don't know a program that we might set up, or just having the youth more involved in like community events. Um, it wasn't always necessarily about big projects, but once we figured out that we could raise money to do big projects and bring new things to the city, that's kind of the direction we went in. Last year's project, I think you guys made a fl the, the city flag or mm -hmm. rejuvenate the city flag, is that right? Yeah. So that, that was a great project. And then this year, um, how many members are on the council with you? 23. 23. How does a, how does a student get it tapped to come into the council? So there's an application process, you have to write um, a couple of essay questions, they're not very long, um, and then the seniors on the, on the previous council and the president go through each application one by one and then rank them. And I think that's an important part because I think that the kids, uh, at least is the chatter that I got to hear a little bit about both from the mayor, both mayors, um, is you know, do I really have to fill out the application? Do I really have to follow through on some things? And the bottom line is yes, because the reason is the projects need follow through, right? And if you don't follow through on the little things, you're not going to follow through on the big things. And so it's a really important part of the application process. So how often do you meet? Every other week. Every other week. During school or outside of school? Usually during coach. And does the mayor come and participate? I know it's called Mayor's Youth Council, but is he here? Yeah, he's probably at three-fourths of the meetings can't make it to all of them. Okay. Yeah, a lot of them. And so this year we have a, a pretty exciting venture with the city to talk a little bit about. So, um, Emma, well, what are we going to do this year? So we are building an accessible playground in Blue Heron Park. Um, basically, the city has contracted a playground company, and we've worked with them to find accessible pieces, which means uh, regular ability kids and handicapped kids can play together. So that's our project. And when you when you decided uh, the Blue Heron site, uh, Jonathan, how did that come about? We took into consideration the fact that we have floodplains in that area, and specifically the one that we chose in Blue Heron, as you might know, Blue Heron floods every now and then. <laughs> and there was an old park there that uh, got so much flood damage that it was unsafe for children to play on. So the site that we chose was one of the only one of the few ones in Blue Heron Park or in that area that did not flood regularly. So, so from the from the kind of the ground up, you have a company helping you. Mm -hmm. um, how big will the park be? Square footage wise, I'm not quite sure, but um, we have like a pretty big main structure. And are we going to see a slide and a swing and all yeah. the fun things that are in the, in that? Yeah, well, and we have swings that. Um, Handicapped children can be put in, and even uh, a child in a mobility device can be like lifted out of their wheelchair and placed in a swing that they lay down on, and then they can be pushed. And, yeah. Uh, that that that'll be great. Um, so obviously, when you think about doing a project like this, you need a lot of things. You need person power, human capital, just to do stuff. Do you have a a, a start date when you want to get this thing going? We're going to start building this in May. We're going to get our fundraising done by April, hopefully. Okay. And so fundraising is a big part of it. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. What's the uh, What's the sticker price on this this concept? Three hundred five thousand. Three hundred and five thousand. Yes. 
That's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how are we going to collect 305000 That's a lot of cans. <laughs> We're about 155000 on our way so far. Outstanding. We talked to the city council, and we raised about 75000 okay. on that. And game time, the company had a matching grant, and they matched other $75,000, and $75 odd dollars, so it added up to 155000 So the council on our own has left to raise 150000 that's still a big sticker price for 20, 23, 25 members. Yes. So what are some things that you all are doing right now to, to get fundraising out and get awareness out? So right now we're working on a presentation that we'll present to various philanthropy clubs in Franklin, the Elks Club, the Rotary Club, the Lions Club, um, and we're also drafting a letter to send out to all the businesses in Franklin asking for donations. And this is really a good time of year to, to, to kind of talk about donations. Um, as we sit in the studio today, it's, a, it's towards the end of November, and so we have a, kind of a month before the year ends, and that's a fiscal time for a lot of businesses to do stuff. So if you want to donate to business, it's a great time to connect with, with our kids, and we'll, find, we'll tell a little bit how to do it towards the end of today's segment. So what, um, when, you, when you get going with the project, what's the official name of this project? this going to be? Do you, have you guys named the, the park? Right now it's just the Franklin Inclusive Park. Franklin That's Inclusive Park. So the FIP? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably come up with it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> probably be a good idea. <laughs> so, all right. Um, and then, how, when you talk about uh, the kids, do you have some kids in mind? I mean, how did you come up with that of a handicap park? There are a lot of uh, people on the council that have brothers and sisters who have been handicapped their whole lives and haven't been able to play on playgrounds with their friends and as kids. So through that, we decided to give the future generations an ability to do that. Well, and there's just never been anything like it in Franklin. I mean, our newest park is almost 15 years old. Uh -huh. which, I mean, they're kept up really well by the Parks and Rec Department, but. We really wanted a new playground that was something completely different than Franklin's ever seen. And to draw people from other communities here as Franklin's a growing city just to give it more opportunity to Yeah, grow. quality of life events are really important and it does need to be inclusive for everybody. Um, is, there a, is, there a, is there a park close by that people that you guys are modeling after or is, is the company actually just saying here's what we think should be the best uh, design inside Blue Heron? For the most part, it's completely original. Okay. Whenever Game Time came up to us and helped us out, they gave us a list of components that we could choose from. Okay. The colors, the slides, everything that's on the park, we chose to be on there. They took what we wanted in the park and turned it into an actual blueprint. And do you have a drawing? Do you have a, a picture or yeah, representation we have a, a of digital, the park? Yeah, okay. a digital picture we can send yeah. you can post. Well, we'll, we'll, post uh, we'll post that as well as how, to, how to, to donate money. So how could if someone help either both in labor and, uh, and financial? Obviously, $150,000 is what we need. Uh, how do they yeah. do that? Um, so financially, you can donate through the Community Foundation website, which is tax deductible if you donate that way. Um, we're also partnering like with Grace United Methodist Church, the youth group is doing a fundraiser project and they're going to give their proceeds to the park. Um, but other than that, we're just relying on the philanthropy clubs and businesses. So. When is your first uh, public speaking opportunity to, to tap into this? I know this is kind of the, the kickoff as we talked about in Superintendent's Corner. Do you have any dates scheduled? To so, talk to the philanthropy yep. groups? Not yet. We're sending out the letters either today or tomorrow to the individual businesses, and we'll hear back. And if uh, if someone's watching this and they say, hey, I'd like to learn more about this, uh, how do they learn more about it? Well, <laughs> we have a lot of information on the Parks and Recreation website. Okay, it's on the park website. Is it attached to us? Do you guys have your own website for Marriage Youth Council? No, not okay. really. Well, one of the things we can do is tap to our website, so we'll help generate some things around that. Uh, and also, um, they could email, um, do you guys have like an email at Marriage Youth Council or something? Right now it's just my email. They're sure yeah. Maybe we'll set up one that's Marriage Youth Council so you don't have to there get all that stuff. Yeah. So we'll do that. We'll set up a Marriage Youth Council at franklinschools.org and they can, can reach you guys that way. 
Um, that way, if someone wants you to come and talk, uh, you can you can have an opportunity to do that. But more importantly, if they have questions about timeline and, and donations, obviously, um, we want to see this thing kick off and really make a difference for kids. Because I, I would agree, it, it is a quality of life, and we do see kids that probably want to go swing and want to go do stuff, but that's just not the right opportunity. So um, your vision is is awesome. Really, really proud that you guys are doing this. So. Um, Anything else that uh, that we should know about the project? It, it, you can donate on the <laughs> Community Foundation website. It's going to be under the Franklin Parks and Recreation. Okay, so we'll get that out. Um, well, thank you for coming and ch chatting with us. Uh, let's shift gears a little bit. Let's talk about uh, kind of what you do in school and who you are. So, Emma, we'll start with you. I know you're a senior. You're, okay. you got some things that are playing. What, what do you hope to do a year from now? Um, I haven't officially decided on a college yet. Um, my number one choice right now is Butler, and I would major in English and political science. So hopefully, I'll be writing about some government stuff sometime in the future. So. All right. And Jonathan, how about you? I know you're a junior. You got a couple of years to to think about where you're headed. But what what are you hoping to do? I'm hoping to do either something with journalism or engineering. I haven't decided which one I like more yet. All right. Well, those are two great things. And, and here's an example of outstanding students that we have in our school that, that really bring the guiding principles uh, of individual student growth and collaboration alive. Um, well done, both of you. Thank you for taking this initiative and growing it. I'm sure that it will be successful in come May. We'll have a weekend party and build this thing, and it'll be a pretty cool thing. And uh, I think the newspaper or, or Channel 6, whichever interviewed you all, said something about when when you guys come back to Franklin to go say hey that that was that we did that so that'll be pretty cool yeah so so well done if you have questions about Superintendent's Corner or more importantly about the Mayor's Youth Council please uh, email to Mayor's Youth Council FranklinSchools.org more importantly please consider donating at this time uh, to help uh, a legacy but also the future of what's going on thanks for watching Jonathan Emma good job Thank you.